Hi, I'm sitting here at my kitchen table and I've just finished marking a set of biology papers. And one of the things I always do when I'm marking papers is I mark every question for every student at the same time. So all of question one and then all of question two, because it's a sort of a semi-blind marking for me. And it makes sure that I'm very consistent when I'm marking things across each of the questions. At the end of the paper, then I need to total up the, obviously the score so I can give that feedback to the students. And there's one of two ways you can do that. You could do that just by going through and adding it up. But what I want to do is spend about 20 minutes now and we're going to use Excel to do the adding up of the papers, but then we're going to do a whole lot more as well um, and looking at how much data there is sitting within these papers that we can really easily access, giving the best feedback we possibly can to our classes as a whole, but also for individual students. So let's go use Excel. So here we are in Excel and I'm going to assume you already know how to use Excel. So I'm just going to get going with the analysis. So the first thing I'm going to do is have a question column and I'm going to make that the second column for a reason that you'll see in a second, um, but it's just going to be the question order. So in my test, um, I have 15 questions uh, that are multiple choice. So I'm just going to have used the, the automatic fill series to give my question numbers of one through 15. I then have some short answers that are lettered. So it's just A, B, C, uh, and so on. And it goes down to I, and again, I'm just gonna use the automatic, um, oh, that's not working. Um, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I, uh, not U, let's, let's try I, as um, the short answers. And then I've got two extended response question, extended response one and extended response two. So I'm just going to number them that way for easy analysis later. And because I just like the formatting to be nice, I'm going to make it um, all right aligned as well. So just that they all lining up nicely. So they're my questions. Now my questions, the reason I left this um, first column blank is I'm going to do an out of uh, because each of the questions have different out ofs. So my first series of 15 questions, they have a, they're all out of one, they're multiple choice, they're either right or they're wrong. Um, then in my short answer, the first two, A and B, are out of four, and then the next four are out of one. And then I have G, which is also out of four, H, which is out of two, I, which is out of one, and then my two extended response questions are out of five each. So now I've got a column that has my out ofs and a column that has my question numbers in their order. Now it's as simple as putting in the data for the students. And I like to do this vertically because I find it very easy because I can type numbers and press enter as I go through. Um, this is real data, but I'm just going to label them as a student um, one and so on, student two, because I don't want to um, show who the students are as, as we're going through. And then it's simply a matter of going through the test paper and entering in their data. So for student number one, uh, if I just go through the paper, we've got the answers coming in. It's a matter of storing each of the values. Oops, sorry, 13 he got correct. And then this one he got wrong. And then over the page. So there's a one student that's been entered. Um, I'm going to go ahead and enter all the data for all the students now and um, come back with that entered because um, you don't really want to watch me typing in all of those values. Okay, so I've entered all my data now for all of the students. Something I always like to do is to have everything fit onto one screen. So I'm just gonna select all the columns for all of the 26 students. And I'm just going to, once they're all selected, just use the drag slider to pull it back so I can see it all. And now all the column widths have been changed and they all fit onto one screen that we can easily see. So there's all the data as it's been entered. The next thing we're going to do is the, the first job, which is totaling up um, each of the sections. So what I need to do is I'm just gonna have, um, leave a couple of blank rows there and I've got a multi-choice section I wanna tally up. There's a short answer I wanna tally up and then obviously the extended answer um, that I want to tally up. Also, I'm gonna have a total for the entire paper as well. 
And it's as simple as using the equal sign to uh, put in a command. I'm just going to come in and uh, put in a sum function and I want to add up all of the multi-choice and close brackets there. Then I'm going to add up all of my short answer, which I know are my letters. So I'm going to add up all of those. And now I'm going to add up all of my extended response, um, all two of them. And then the total, um, I'm going to obviously total up all of the data. I could have just added up the multi-choice, multi -choice, the short answer and the long answer, but I've chosen to go back to the original data. And there we go, um, there's the data for this first student. Because Excel's wonderful, um, I can then just drag those formulas over and it will then do all the tallies for all of my students. So now I have some really, really nice data for dealing with the students um, as far as a summary sheet goes. So, um, because I like to make things a bit nice, I'm just going to make my top level bold. I'm just using the shortcut and I'm going to put my question numbers as bold as well um, because I'd like to be able to see that really, really clearly. And now I'm going to copy all of this data and I'm going to make a new sheet and I'm going to paste the data in and um, then I've lost um, my column widths because I just used the control V, but I'm just going to pull those column widths back down so we can see all of that data sitting there, which makes it good. So in this sheet now, um, I wanna start doing some of the analysis and the analysis is really quite powerful if we um, do a couple of things. Now the first is, I need to know what the students' performances were on each of the questions. So um, I've got performances now for a student, but I actually wanna know how well the class performed on all of them, um, on each question individually. So over here, I'm going to create a total, um, which I'm going to call a standardized total. And the reason I'm calling it a standardized total um, is because I'm not just going to add up the values, I'm also going to divide then by the out of, because then I can compare each of the questions because um, just totaling it up, it won't show me the patterns for the questions that are out of four compared to the questions out of one. So I'm just gonna use a, a two parts to a formula. I'm gonna use a sum to be able to total up all of the questions. So that's now, um, I can see that. And now I'm going to divide that by the out of, which is obviously over here. And what that will do is it'll give me a, st a standardized total for each of the questions. Now I need to make sure that I do, I always like to put the brackets in the right place because that way I know exactly what Excel is doing. So I know it's gonna do the sum and then divide by the, um, the out of for that question. So my standardized um, total for that question there is five. So only five students got that one correct. And again, I'm just gonna drag down using the crosshair um, so I can actually get that standardized total for each of the questions. Now what we can do with this standardized total is we can now sort the data by how hard the questions were. Like I can tell right now that the first question was actually quite hard, um, which is probably bad test design. It'd be good if it was a, an easier question to do. But I'm going to sort the data now um, by how hard the questions were. So I'm going to select all the data. So now I've selected the data, I'm going to use the sort command and I'm going to sort um, by the column AD. Now my data has headers, so I've chosen that as an option. And then AD is the standardized total. And I actually wanted to go from largest to smallest. So that will sort from easiest to hardest when it comes um, for each of the questions. So once I've done that, you can see now I've got two questions that have got 24 as a standardized total, and then one question that's got four as its standardized total. So that's from hardest to easiest. Uh, sorry, easiest to hardest. So that starts to get really interesting then because now we can talk about the difficulty of each question. Now what I'm going to do also is I'm just going to select all of my data and copy it again. And I'm going to create a new sheet. And this time I'm going to use a special uh, paste command, which is called transpose. And what that does is it turns columns into rows and rows into columns. And once I've done that, now you can see I've got the difficulty order along the top by the questions. And then if I go all the way out to the side, I'll have the students down the end. So 
The same as I did before, I'm going to select all of my columns, except for um, the ones, that, oh no, I'll do all of them. And I'm just gonna use the double click command this time to, to shrink everything down. So now I've got my totals over there, and then I've got my students um, in um, order down here. And now what I wanna do is I'm gonna do another sort, and I'm going to make everything organized by um, the, how well the students performed. So this time I selected too much data then actually, I need to select only the cells I want to sort. And I'm also going to do another custom sort now, and I'm going to, this time, I'm going to sort by my total column, and I'm going to go from largest to, no, smallest to largest, that is correct. And that will have then the lowest performing student at the top and the highest performing student at the bottom. Now, what we've set up now is the ability to, and this is actually showing us what is known as a Goodman progression. And a Goodman progression, um, we have the questions in order of difficulty along the top, and then the students in order of performance down the side. And now the patterns aren't yet really clear. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make all the columns exactly the same width, uh, just by dragging them out just slightly. So each of those are easy to see now. And notice with the standardized totals, I've lost the decimals on there, but that doesn't really matter uh, for what we're doing now. And now I'm going to use something called conditional formatting. And conditional formatting allows us to color code things and to see the patterning within the data. Some people can easily see patterns within data. They might be able to look at this and see the patterns, but other people can't. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select all of the cells with a out of of one because I need to be able to color code um, or on similar scales. So I'm gonna select um, all of those. I'm just using the control key to select multiple ranges now. Um, and I'm just holding down the control and just selecting all the cells for students with questions with an out of one, as I hope you can see on the screen. And I'll just do those ones. And then the final four. So they're all being selected now, and I'm going to use this conditional formatting. And what I'm going to use is color scales, and I want to color code so that green is um, correct, that's the right answer, and red is incorrect. Um, and it's really important that we, we go through and do that um, when we're doing these sorts of questions. Um, so I'm going to just going to click on that one. And I'm noticing that I've got a data entry error because um, I selected all out of one and question five is out of one, but I've got a student with a half, which means I've mistyped that. Um, just let me look at that. It is supposed to be one. And so now I can actually see that the total there as it should be, which is good. The next thing I'm going to do now is I've got um, two questions out of five, one that's out of two and three that are out of four. I need to color code them the same way, but again with the same color scale. So I'm using the control key, I'm selecting all my questions that are out of four now. So I come down here and there should be one more, which is this one over here. And I'm going to do the same thing now. I'm going to do the same color scale. So conditional formatting, um, color scales, and again, I want uh, incorrect to be red and green to be the um, right answer. But notice now because there's four levels, we get some color shading in between. Now I'm going to choose my out of of five. And again, I'm hitting that control key uh, coming down and go to do my conditional formatting. Again, color scales, it's that first one, um, which is green is correct. And then red is um, incorrect. And then finally, I've got to do my out of two and select those ones and I'm zooming out, which isn't helping us. And conditional formatting again, uh, color scales and that same one. And you can see now, um, well, I hope you can see, there's some really obvious patterns within the data. So first of all, the Goodman progression, um, and I'm gonna draw my screen now. So if I just grab a, um, I'm gonna grab blue because we'll be able to see that. Um, the Goodman progression is around this patterning where you get this triangular shape. 
and you can see the patterning there and it's real class data so it's not absolutely perfect or anything like that. But um, what's really interesting is the area where you get the right and the wrong answers, that's the, called the zone of proximal development because that's where the students are actually working. And it's, it's based on um, really good sound educational theory that, that says, if we know that the range of experiences the students have been through, and all these students went through the same range of experiences, they um, have had um, difficulty at different points within that progression of, of difficulty of the questions because we're analysing this after the fact. We're analysing this on the student's performance. So I, the test was written uh, with a specific objective um, and obviously it's to, to rank and sort students and also give them feedback on where they need to move to next. But I can see for this student, the first student on the list, student 24, uh, I can see that they're, they're quite a low student. And so you can see here, this area here is where they started getting them wrong. Now, interestingly, they've got a question right um, that was difficult, uh, one of the more difficult questions. And there'd be a question to ask about whether that's as a result of um, their guessing an answer, it's a multiple choice question, um, or whether they are actually did actually understand that quite well. But if I was to focus with this student on maybe these questions here that they've got wrong, then all of a sudden, that's the area they're ready to learn. That's the, the, the next bit that they can work on. And if I go down to the last student on the list, um, this person has got one question, has drawn that off center, one question wrong, uh, one mark out of four lost there. So that's probably something to work on with that student. And they've got the most difficult ones so, um, wrong on the paper. So that's something to work on there with those students as well. So we can start to see the individual patterning on what's going on there as well. Um, all at the moment, this is based on the, uh, this progression of, of setup is based on the entire paper. But it might also be interesting to look at the short answer and the, um, the multiple choice, the short answer and the extended response separately. So what I might do now is um, let's pull out the extended response first. So extended response two was harder than extended response one, but only by a small amount. So I'm just actually going to um, cut that uh, column out and let's put it over the end over here. So we'll insert those cut cells. And then let's put in uh, the extended response two. We'll cut that out as well. And we'll um, put that in over here. So now I've got my extended response out by itself and we're still in that difficulty order. And I can tell that because um, 19 is before 17, which is the way I'd want it to be. I'm just going to put in a blank column in here. Um, so let's insert a column. And now let's grab um, my short answers. So I can grab those two together and I'll just cut those and let's put them here. Insert those cut cells. Um, the next one is CIG. So let's cut those out and put them over here. And then finally, um, no, I've got to do it I, all together. They do seem to be, which is good. Um, so if I cut those out as well and I'll put them at the end, oops. Um, um, insert those cut cells there. And so now what I've got is I've got um, each of my um, areas of the test as separate items. I'm just gonna, just because I like it to be nice and neat, I'm just gonna drag that down so it's a bit separate. So now I can see each of the sections of the paper. Um, I've got um, the short answer at the start. I've got the, sorry, the multiple choice at the start, the short answer now and the extended response. And I, I find that an easier way to give feedback to students as well because they, they used to think about those different question types. The last thing that I wanna do um, is talk about how we can look at strengths and um, weaknesses of the class. Because it's um, in, if I, one way I like to look at the data is um, giving this, this class feedback to saying, okay, as a class, you've done really, really well on these questions, but you need to work on these ones. Um, and so my rule of thumb is if I've got a small class, I like to work in thirds. So there's 26 students in this data. So I will work into thirds. Um, so that is if more than two thirds get it right, I will say that's a strength of the class because only a third got it wrong. But if only a third got it right or less than a third got it right, I want to say that's a weakness. And that's something that I need to reteach probably as I go through this test. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a new column down here, which is strength and weaknesses. Cool. Um, 
and um, just pull that out. And I'm just gonna write a little bit of logic now to work out what's going on. So what it's gonna be a nested if statement, um, and the way an if statement works, if, if you start typing it, it'll tell you. So um, it's an if, and then you've gotta have a logical test. So what I wanna know, it's about the standardized total. If the standardized total um, is less than, um, more than, sorry, uh, it's a, a standardized total is more than two thirds of the data. So um, I know there was 26 um, as a possible um, total, there's 26 students when it comes to the total. Um, I wanna divide that by three and multiply that by two, that will give me the two thirds of the 26. Um, so if it's less than, if it's greater than that, it's going to be a strength. So I'm going to have, I'll, I'll put, make Excel, just put an S there, if it's going to be a strength. And then there's two other possibilities. So I'm gonna do, this is where the nested if comes in. So I'm gonna have another if statement. So the first condition is if it's greater than two thirds, it's gonna be a strength. The, the second condition is if it is greater, um, so if it is less than one third, so less than, and again, the 26 is a possible, divide by three gives me that third. If it's less than a third, then the value I wanna do, it's a weakness. And then the last possibility, uh, because you've got to finish that first nested if, I just don't want to put anything in there. So I'll just have uh, two talking marks, which says don't put anything in there. I've got to close that first bracket and close that second bracket. And I think that should work. Um, so that first one should be a strength. Now, if I drag this out across all of them, it'll now automatically uh, assign the strengths and weaknesses. And um, where there's no values, it will obviously say that's a weakness because you've got less than a third, which is working it out. And you can see now, I can easily give my, my class feedback. And this isn't feedback based on a gut feeling or anything like that. It's based on actual hard data. I know these, for, these questions here were strengths. So in the multiple choice, question six, 10, two, um, oh, I've missed D. D is supposed to be over to the side. Um, so let's actually pull that out now. Um, so we're going to cut that out. Now it's got 22, so it's the highest performing of those. So I've got to put it in at the front of this. So let's put it in here. Uh, insert cut cells. Oops, in the wrong spot. Uh, insert the cut cells. So now D is actually in the right spot, which is good. I uh, missed that in the letters, obviously. So um, in the multiple choice section, um, it's these five questions here. So six, 10, two, five, and nine were strengths for the class. So, um, whereas the last four, so four, question 14, one, 11, and 13 were weaknesses. So these are the ones I can say, hey, you did a really good job. And these are the ones I should be really explicitly reteaching. Um, likewise, for the short answer, D, E, and A um, this were strengths for the class, whereas H was a weakness. And in the extended response, it was a strength. Um, the second multiple uh, second extended response was a strength for the class. I can also now, in this intermediate tree bit, um, my logic is now I need to work with individual students because it's not a strength and it's not a weakness for the class. So I need to do subgroups. And the subgroups are really quite obvious when you look at the patterning. So I can see here, um, for this section of questions, there's actually, there seems to be some patterns with the students that are getting those sort of answers. So I could actually go through and say, um, it looks like I need to work with student 24, 20, uh, sorry, one, 20, 26, and six and 17, probably 21, uh, student 21. Um, yes, student five, probably uh, four, uh, student uh, nine, uh, 15 and two for these questions. And I could do them as a subgroup and actually reteach them those sort of things. So um, I think that doing this sort of analysis is um, very, very quick as you hopefully have just seen. And um, I've only really scratched the, the surface now of interpreting this data and you need to interpret that data sitting there with a the paper obviously and going through each of the questions so you understand what it was you were actually asking. But I think a little bit of effort uh, putting the data in a little bit of um, skill in writing a little bit of equations within Excel and the color coding I think we can all of a sudden see some really interesting patterns um, that really impacts on the way we give feedback to students so 
That's a really quick and I hope a really easy way of using Excel to analyze test papers. And you can do the same thing for a um, full marks book if you want. And I hope that you are able to use this to give better feedback to your students, also reflect a bit more on your teaching and um, overall be a better teacher as a result of using a very simple technology that is very, very powerful. Good luck.